Hello, everybody. This is Gus, and I'm going to be talking about RelayNet and how it will help restore connectivity when the internet is cut off. Now, before we dive into RelayNet and do a quick demo, let's first consider the problem. Imagine that you find yourself with no access to the internet for days, weeks, maybe even months, because the local or the national government cut off the internet in the region where you live. How do you send that email that you need to send or follow up on that WhatsApp conversation? Unfortunately, this is not a theoretical problem in many regions across the world. In 2019 alone, 33 countries cut off the internet. And as I'm recording this right now, Ethiopia has been disconnected for two weeks and Myanmar has two regions disconnected from the internet for over a year. Um, what people tend to do in this situation is that, obviously, those who can travel to a region connected to the internet, they do so. And when they do that, they often help a friend or a relative by bringing their phone or laptop with them to send or receive any data that they need to send. Or maybe even uh, copy a password to a service so that they can do whatever task they need to do on that service. Of course, that's not very good from a security or a privacy point of view. And it's certainly not scalable to connect the whole region disconnected from the internet. And this is precisely where RelayNet comes into play. So RelayNet will allow any compatible app to continue to work as usual when the internet is available. But when the internet is cut off, the app will be able to continue, um, will be able to fall back to a backup medium Right now, the only backup medium that we've got is what we call a RelayNet courier. A courier is somebody that relays data between a region connected to the internet and a region disconnected from the internet. Like the example I gave earlier, except that with RelayNet, that information that they are transporting is end-to-end -end encrypted. That means that the courier can't see or change what they are transporting, nor can they see which apps people are using. And that means that as a user, you don't need to trust the courier at all because the worst damage that they can cause is to drop the data along the way. And even if they drop the data, RelayNet will automatically detect that and try to send it at the next opportunity. So really there is no, um, no risk from the point of view of the user. Um, in that interaction with the courier. Now, let's consider a very concrete example. Let's say that Twitter supports RelayNet. So let's see that picture of how that communication will take place in this scenario. So the RelayNet app on the phone, in this case, will not be talking to Twitter.com directly. It will be doing so via RelayNet, or more precisely, via the RelayNet app on the phone, which will in turn will be talking to the relay, a RelayNet server on the internet. And this will be used to send data and receive data. Of course, this only works when the internet is available. When the internet is not available, obviously this link is lost and this app can continue to send data, but it won't be getting any new data. And similarly, the server, Twitter.com can continue to send data, like the, a, a new tweet from somebody that the user follows, but there will be no ability to get new data because, again, this link is lost. And this is where a courier will step in and establish that missing link. So the way couriers work is that they will have a route, and that route will have a series of stops. In this case, the last only the last stop has access to the internet, but all the other stops don't have access to the internet. Now, looking at what will happen at, at each stop, let's consider one with no access to the internet. So what will happen here is that the user will arrive at this stop and they will turn on Wi-Fi hotspot on their device. And they will do that so that RelayNet users around them can connect to, the, to their device to exchange data. So send, give data to the courier that should eventually be delivered to the internet and get any new data that the courier previously collected from the internet. And the way that will be done is essentially they will be, the user will be using the RelayNet app to do that synchronization with the courier. Um, eventually, the courier will get to a location with access to the internet, and they will deliver all the data that was collected along the way, and they will collect new data on behalf of the users on the, on the route. 
Um, now let's see a concrete example of this. Um, and just to give you the heads up, I'm going to be demoing the, the Android implementation. We completed the, the courier app, but we just started the RelayNet app on the end user's phone. So keep that in mind. So the app, we, we barely started working on it. So let's see two phones. So I've got a phone on the right-hand side, which is the phone that the courier will have, and a phone on the left-hand side, which is the, the phone that the end user will have. Again. As a user, if you are disconnected from the internet, and let's make sure that, so right now the user is disconnected from the internet, no Wi-Fi, no 4G, same for the courier. Um, so now as a courier, you just arrived at a location with no access to the internet. Because you don't have access to the internet, the app will give you the option to synchronize with people around you. So you are now ready to start accepting connection from people around you. Now, in this case, to simplify the demo, I already connected uh, the user's phone, this one, to the, the one on the left-hand side, to the Wi-Fi network of the courier, just to simplify this demo. So as a user, I open this app. And again, I only need to interact with this app when the internet is unavailable and I need to synchronize with a courier. Otherwise, this app will be running in the background with no need to interact with the user. So now that I'm connected to the Wi-Fi network of the courier, as a user, I just press the synchronize button. Uh, sorry, I haven't connected to the Wi-Fi uh, of the courier just yet. So I, I just enabled that. So now we are connected. And we initiate that, that uh, um, synchronization. You may have noticed that for a fraction of a second on the courier screen, uh, the, the counter of users connected was set to one. That's because we're sending so little data that it's negligible from the point of view of the courier. Um, but it, it, the data was sent uh, from the user and any new data that the courier had for that user was also delivered. So at this point, if there were, say, a new tweet coming, uh, a new incoming tweet from somebody that the user follows, then right now they will be getting a, new, a, a notification on the Twitter app about that, um, about that tweet. So now there is nothing else for the user to do. So the courier can carry on. So they can stop that location. And um, so they can stop that location and, and eventually get to a point where they've got access to the internet. So. When they get, let's simulate that example. So I'm going to connect to a Wi-Fi network to simulate what would happen when the internet is available. So when the internet is available, we will get the option to synchronize with the internet. So we will go ahead with that. We are now sending the data that we collected, waiting a few seconds for that data to propagate, and now collecting any new data that should be going to the users on the route. So that's it. That's that's all done. Now, as a courier, I can go away to another stop and do the same process all over again. And obviously, I will be collecting and delivering the data along the way uh, with synchronizations with people and with the internet. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that, um, as you can see, we are still building this app. Um, we have. Uh, uh, we are also going to be doing a, a desktop implementation, and we expect the Android and the desktop implementation to be ready by October. So at that point, people will be able to integrate their services on RelayNet to make it work this way. And this is just, this is barely the beginning. We have a, a long and very exciting roadmap for what we want RelayNet to do over time, such as, for example, single circumventing internet uh, censorship um, without using VPNs or Tor, uh, just with the RelayNet app, that should be enough for any RelayNet compatible service to circumvent that kind of censorship as well. And that's just one example of those many things that we've got planned. Um, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching this. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to participate in the Q&A at RightsCon. Or if you're watching this video after RightsCon, uh, then please visit RelayNet.network. That's it. Thank you so much. Bye.